Let's take a look here at uh, 2017 macro uh, FRQ number one. Uh, all right, here we are. Uh, assume that the economy of country X has an actual unemployment rate of 7%, a NRU, natural rate of unemployment, of 5%, and an inflation rate of 3%. Okay, so uh, part A, uh, using the values uh, given above, draw a correctly labeled graph of both short run and long run Phillips curves, and then label all the uh, relevant points. So. Um, and actually go to a blank sheet for this so I have enough space to, to draw this out. Um, and then, um, well, we won't need the graph necessarily to uh, uh, talk about, well, part one here. Uh, then we're gonna assume that they talk about no policy action. Um, and then in the long run, what's gonna happen? So I may, uh, uh, once I draw the graph, I'll address uh, part B as well. All right, erase all that. Okay, so uh, this is a uh, Phillips curve question, right? Um, it give you a number of values and then essentially uh, ask you to, to draw um, the graph. So uh, Phillips curve, right, shows uh, the relationship um, between uh, let's see, that inflation rate here in the y-axis and uh, unemployment rate here on the x-axis. Um, so I'm actually going to start uh, on this one with the uh, uh, long run Phillips curve, because that's uh, sort of the obvious uh, thing in this question, right? Long run Phillips curve, there's no relationship uh, in the long run, right? The Phillips curve remains at the natural rate of unemployment, which was given in the question uh, as five. Uh, so uh, to me, that's the most straightforward part. Uh, of this question, we know that. Um, now the Phillips curve in the short run, uh, and let's make sure we label this, uh, long run Phillips curve. Uh, in the short run, there is a trade-off, right? So it should be downward sloping. Uh, we can actually go negative. Um, this would be short run Phillips curve. And then uh, in the question, uh, they gave us uh, the point that the, uh, uh, economy is at now, right? And they gave us a figure of uh, unemployment of 7%. So we know that's over here, right? Uh, so let's come down. Unemployment is at 7%. And then they also gave us the inflation rate, which was 3%. Okay, so, you know, we can tell from this graph, you know, we don't need to show this, but, you know, if the economy were to be uh, back on the uh, uh, long run Phillips curve, right, at uh, full employment, where the NRU would be, uh, the unemployment rate would equal the NRU, which is five, uh, then, you know, the inflation rate would be something higher than three. We don't know how much higher, but uh, we can tell that much. Okay, so uh, that is part A. Um, that's our, our Phillips curve graph. Uh, part B, uh, again, so they asked about, um, in this case, uh, if there were no government intervention. So you almost have to think about uh, the ADAS model here um, and, and what's going on um, because they ask about, okay, what's gonna happen? Um, uh, actually, well, let's just, let's just go back. Um, okay, country X takes no policy action to reduce unemployment. Uh, in the long run, will each of the following shift to the right, shift to the left, or remain the same? And then they wanna know about the short run aggregate supply curve. Okay. Um, so we're going to make that connection, right? We showed on our graph that unemployment, um, oops, I need my pen to be able to draw on this. Okay, so uh, unemployment is greater than uh, the NRU, right? 7% versus 5%. So what does that mean in terms of the ADAS model? Um, so let's just quick sketch this out. Aggregate demand, short run, aggregate supply. Uh, so what's going on in this situation is that unemployment is higher than the than the NRU. Uh, so what you're showing, what what we would show on this graph, right, is the uh, recessionary gap, right? Um, you know, why actual uh, and why full employment, 
Um, and then this is your long run aggregate supply curve. So the question here is asking about uh, what's gonna happen to these uh, curves uh, in the long run, right? If the government doesn't intervene. Well, uh, so the first one asked about uh, short run aggregate supply. So uh, we know if the government doesn't intervene, the economy wants to pull back uh, to this full employment level. So the short run aggregate supply curve is gonna shift back this way, right? And the mechanism for that is uh, uh, lower input prices, lower nominal wages, uh, lower inflation expectations, right? Any uh, combination sort of those things going on uh, to move this curve gradually back to this uh, long run uh, employment level. So uh, let's go here. I'm just gonna write on here. Screen sketch, there we go. Um, okay, so short run agate supply curve uh, would be shift right. And I just kind of walked through that explanation. Uh, again, it's very helpful here to kind of quickly sketch out the uh, 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 graph. Uh, make sure you get your situation correct because you have to recognize that you're in a recessionary gap there. Okay, uh, now long run uh, Phillips curve. Um, no change, right? Because the long run Phillips curve is, is vertical at uh, the NRU. Um, even though the government is doing nothing uh, in terms of policy implementation, uh, that's not gonna affect the natural rate of unemployment, right? So there's no change in the NRU, uh, therefore there's no change to the uh, long run Phillips curve. Now notice in this question, uh, part one, they want an explanation. Uh, part two, doesn't necessarily ask for an explanation. So uh, make sure you write a sentence or two uh, using that logic I walked through earlier. Uh, in part one, part two, uh, doesn't ask for that. So you don't need to volunteer uh, a long explanation for this. Okay, so uh, let's go on to uh, part C. Uh, identify a fiscal policy action that could be used to reduce the unemployment rate in the short run. Okay, so uh, we are in a recessionary gap. We already uh, sort of identified that from, from part B. Um, there are really only a couple things that could happen um, and they really only want one, but uh, so government spending uh, could be increased, right? That would reduce unemployment, uh, trying to stimulate aggregate demand uh, or uh, taxes could be decreased. Right, those are sort of the, the, the two options that, that government has to, to implement. And again, uh, not a huge explanation there. You just need to sort of state those uh, you know, in, in one sentence and that's, uh, and really you only need one. Um, part D, uh, draw a correctly labeled graph of ADAS uh, and show the impact on the equilibrium price level and real GDP of the fiscal policy action identified in part C. Uh, okay, well, so we kind of already sketched out uh, what was going on, but this one is asking for a, specifically only the ADAS model and what's going on with, uh, let's, just, let's just use this, right? Uh, government spending uh, increase. So uh, they just want us to show uh, what happens in that case, right? So we have, uh, you know, price level, uh, real GDP. Let's draw our uh, curves. Uh, so we got short run, aggregate supply and aggregate demand. So technically in this question, you don't have to draw the long run aggregate supply curve. Uh, you could, I would just make sure that you do it consistent with the situation previously in the question. So you're drawing it to the right um, and showing that you're in a recessionary gap. Um, it, it doesn't explicitly ask for that though. So it doesn't, it, we're just trying to show the effect of this policy. And that would be, uh, we're increasing government spending. Um, you know, a, a reduction in taxes would have the same effect. Uh, we're increasing aggregate demand. Uh, let's call this short run aggregate. I'm sorry. Misspoke. Because that is a supply curve. Okay, aggregate demand one. All right, we're going this way. Right, okay, so increase in, in G, right? The G component of, of real uh, GDP is a shift outward in aggregate demand. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do 
uh, with this uh, fiscal policy, right? So, um, and show the impact on price level and uh, output. So you would show your, your points here initially, you know, PL1, you can call this uh, Q1, uh, and then as long as you showed your, your secondary points, um, so it, it's essentially increasing uh, both price and quantity. All right, uh, moving on to part E. Uh, based on the change in GDP uh, identified in part D, will the supply of country access currency in the foreign exchange market increase, decrease, or remain the same? Uh, explain, this is a, a, a chunk from uh, both E and F are from uh, unit six. Um, so the, the supply of the currency is gonna increase um, Uh, and the reason being is that uh, as we move uh, outward, right, in uh, output, so in real GDP, uh, that's going to increase our uh, imports, right? So uh, imports uh, adds a supply of the currency as people trying to uh, change that for foreign currency. Um, and that would be sort of your, your explanation um, there through, uh, through increase imports. Let's just call it net exports. Uh, but the imports are what's what are changing more there. Um, and then uh, part F, again, uh, unit six, based on your answer part E and assuming flexible exchange rate system, will country access currency appreciate, depreciate, uh, or remain the same in the foreign exchange market. Uh, so this one should be uh, depreciate. Um, again, we already talked about uh, you know, it's connected to here. We talk about increased supply, right? So if you were to draw out the, 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 the graph, right? Uh, and then you're increasing supply, uh, that leads to a lower price, right? So a lower exchange rate uh, equates to depreciating uh, currency uh, and therefore uh, part F is depreciate. 